Hello, I hope you're doing well. I am super excited to be filming my Hobonichi Cousin effects edit video for the July to December book. Um, this is the January to June book, which we are almost done. Just as a little comparison, this is like the top view. As you can see, this first one is um, quite chunky and a little bit dirty, but that is a sign of a well-loved journal, so not a bad thing. I don't want to talk too much, I just want this to be a chill video, so hopefully you enjoy. Um, starting with the cover, so for the first half of the year, I took this like recycled cardstock and I used the back, which has this like craft texture, um, and I cut it down to size and covered the covered the cover, um, mostly because, as you can see, the book itself is this like really neon bright lime green color, and I'm personally not a big fan of it. So I thought this would just make it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. And I was going to do the same thing for the second half, which is why I made sure to keep this exact same cardstock for the past six months. And I think, I mean, it would obviously look great, but I think I might actually just keep this true cover color. I think compared to this lime green, it's not as offensive. Obviously, it's subjective. So yeah, very last minute decision. I'm going to skip covering the cover with this. First thing that I'm going to do is put down the 2024 vinyl and I would use the craft again if I were to cover the cover, but since I'm not, let's just use this white one. So I'm going to cover this text. Even though this is a thick vinyl, you will see a little bit of shadowing of the Hobonichi Cousin text underneath, but that doesn't bother me too much. Okay, then I still want to put down the birth flower seals. So I'm just gonna put it side by side and I could grab a ruler, but that would require me to go to, to get up and <laughs> walk. So I'm gonna use this cardstock. This is the July Lily and August Poppy. I I'm going to put down the poppy first. Also, it is a beautiful sunny day, so I think um, all of the dads are um, mowing the lawn today, <laughs> so you might hear that. Okay, let's put this down, then this. Something that I am actually really proud of is the fact that I managed to keep all of the leftover pieces from six months ago. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. In the middle. Ah, oh my god. I've gotten quite a few people asking whether I will stick with the... Oh shoot whether I will be sticking with the Avex system for next year. I think I'm just going to get the full Hobonichi Cousin book next year. Even though it does get very, very, very chunky by the end of the year, I just, I feel better having everything in one book. It just makes the most sense to me. Okay, I'm actually really loving this so far. I think, I, I was really hesitant about the blue background, but I think it gives it a really fresh look. For the inner cover, I, as you can see, added a piece of Emoti vellum. This time, I'm going to skip doing that, but instead use a piece of vellum for a DIY. So I'm going to scooch this over. Basically, I'm going to make a fold over pocket with this vellum, and I'm realizing that I do need a ruler, so give me a second. So I want the pocket to span the entire width of this book, um, but you want to leave about a centimeter on either side. So just like move over a little bit, and then this is like where you want to cut. So this is about 14.7 centimeters, so I'm just going to do 16.7.
I am speaking a little bit quickly and I'm a little bit hyper because to be honest I'm a little anxious I have a lot of work to do and that is why I've been putting off doing this setup because it takes quite a bit of time but um, July is coming up very soon so I definitely want to get this done ASAP just gonna use my exacto knife and where did I make the mark? oh I see it, okay Ay ay ay. If you have a guillotine trimmer, it'll probably be a lot easier. Wonderful. So the next step is to mark out the little flaps on each side so we know where to crease it. I'm gonna actually use my X-Acto knife and very, very, very gently score it so it's easier to fold. Very gently. As you can see, the fold is really sharp where I scored it earlier. Just wanna make sure you don't cut it through. Now what you can do is measure out a centimeter from the other side and if you measured it perfectly, then it should all be perfect, but there is room for human error and stuff like that. So I'm just going to use the actual book as a guide to measure out where the edge should be. I would also leave a little bit of gap because when the book is closed, um, it kind of pushes everything out. So it's just a little tip. Okay, see, earlier we measured 14.7, but this is more like 14.6. Is all of this necessary? Definitely not. But because I have to stare at this for the next six months, I want to make sure it is as nice as it can be. I think I pressed a little too hard on that. Hopefully it's okay. Ooh, it might be, I don't know if you can see, it's like sticking out just a little bit. Will this be an issue? Hopefully not. Okay, I'm just going to choose to be delusional and keep going because I don't want to refold that. So now I'm just going to simply fold this in half. Then I'm going to unfold these flaps and then I'm going to use my scissors or i guess i can just use my exacto knife and cut a little slit now this does not have to be perfect um because you won't see it but i'm just gonna do some triangles and take this bit out oh shoot i should have used the scissors also going to trim this part um, this is all kind of unnecessary, but it just ensures that uh, the flap stays hidden. If you have those like cool scissors that has like scalloped edges, you can even do that for the top. Fold the flaps back in, and then I'm going to use my tape runner. A little tip, you can take a piece of paper and put it underneath so you don't accidentally... Whoops. You don't accidentally over into the part where you don't want to be sticky. Just a little disclaimer, I came up with this fold-over pocket idea literally while I was on the Stairmaster. I don't know if this will work, so <laughs> we are, we will see. Okay, so this vellum pattern unfortunately has um, like a right side, so you can see everything's like vertical. I do have other vellums like the emoti vellum where like whichever orientation you look at it like there's no right side so when you fold it over there's going to be one side with the characters upright and then one side where everything's um upside down so you do have to decide which side you want it to be upright 
Okay. Now we fold it over. I hope this works. Uh-oh. I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it's going to work. Oh, Lord. Okay, so I'm going to do a bit of adjustment and fold the flaps inwards a little bit more. If you measure everything right the first time, you won't have to do all of this. As I said, I came up with this idea on a whim, so I didn't plan for this very well. Okay, let's try this again. If this doesn't work, I am giving up the Hobonichi cousin forever. Oh my gosh, it actually worked. And now we have a fun little pocket. <gasps> that is awesome. Okay, and even when it's close, as you can see, nothing is sticking out, which is pretty awesome. I am pleased. And then just to decorate it further, I'm going to put down this I do not know what I'm doing sticker. Just right above. I am loving this. And hopefully you can see why I didn't want to add a piece of brown to this side. I feel like it would just like clash a little bit too much and look a little too busy. So I'm very happy with how this has turned out. Moving along, I think I'm gonna put down the tabs next. And then after that, I'm gonna get to work and I'll finish this setup tomorrow probably. So, um, Something that I want to fix from this book is that I kind of tabbed this unintuitively. So I put the weeklies down here, but then the weeklies come first. So I'm always like tempted to go up here to flip to my weeklies. So yeah, I'm just gonna switch the order of these. I explained this in all of my tabbing videos, so I'll say this really quickly. Our tabs are scored in the middle, so it's very easy to fold over. And then where there is a color change, that is where you line it up with the edge of the paper. So let me just do a demo. So let's start with the weekly tab. I do want it to be somewhat aligned for how I did it last time. Another tip is to put a piece of paper underneath. One reason is so that you can see the edge of the paper clearly. The other reason is so you don't accidentally tab together two sheets, which has happened before. So you can see where the gray meets the white, that is where you want to line it up with the edge of the paper. Then just simply fold it over. Okay, so that is the first set of tabs done. I'm gonna move this out of the way. For the later tabs to line it up perfectly, you just take your already tabbed sheets and kind of like bend it so you can still see where it is and then that way you can kind of use it as a guide. Wonderful. So look at how perfect that is. Okay, then September. Always love a fresh set of tabs. Okay, I'm gonna speed through the next bit because it is gonna be the same thing. So next up, we are gonna do the dailies. I'm gonna put down December. And then, as I said, I will continue this setup tomorrow because I have a lot of work to do. Wonderful! Okay, this is what the tabs look like. I'm obsessed with this look so far. 
still quite a few things to do so i will be back tomorrow okay it is the next day we are back to business we really only have a few things left to do i'm going to add the year at a glance calendars to this part so i'm going to start with february it would probably be more accurate if I actually used my pencil to mark this in, but I am feeling a bit lazy. Then I'm gonna space out January, and then March. Ah, shoot, I forgot to take into consideration this um, corner, but that is okay because similar to um, the first book, I'm going to put on these mini floral doodles. Now, we do have part two available in the shop, but I forgot to bring it back from the office, so I'll just use part one. Nobody's going to notice. Let's continue with this. I'm going to put this at the bottom. I feel like I mess up the year at a glance every year, one way or another. Again, this would be a lot more accurate if you had used a pencil to space it out. Uh, as you can see, that's not too great. That's okay. I'm currently feeling very flustered because I have a very long to-do list and I'm just honestly not in the mood to set this up at the moment. Like I have to be in a certain mindset to be creative and want to play with my planners. But I really want to get this video up by Sunday and we are on the brink of July. So I do want to get this done. Oh, shoot. I just noticed that I've been using Sunday Start. No. Oh my gosh. I am a strict believer in Monday Start calendars. Um, so, uh, that's okay. I don't really refer to the year at a glance anyways, so it's not too big of a deal. Um, it's more so just for decoration, but uh, I feel like I betrayed my Monday starters. <laughs> the bottom looks very wonky. I'm not happy about that, but let's try to fix it up with these mini doodles. First up, cover this red corner. And I'm just gonna try to balance things out a little bit especially with this wonky October. Okay, I think this part is done. Let's move on to this section, which um, I'm gonna keep as my uh, partially steps tracker, partially workout tracker, and then partially important dates tracker. Just using a pencil. I feel like black is a bit too strong for this. Wonderful. This is what I did for the first half of the year. Um, as you can see here, I color coded my steps, and then this is the abbreviation of my workouts, and then this is where I put all of my important events. And then this is where I summarized my average number of steps and did this like little graph. I am gonna follow this exact same layout basically. Let's do the washi strips first. This is washi paper, so it's um, transparent and it is also rippable. Just gonna take off a chunk so I don't have to work with the super long strip. You can use like a scrap piece of sticker paper to avoid it sticking down onto the planner page. And then I'm actually just gonna rip this, I think might be easier than with the exacto knife and this way you don't run the risk of accidentally cutting through the super thin hobonichi paper 
and I'm just going to repeat this for all six months. My birthday is in August, um, so I'm probably a bit biased, but I am honestly in love with this poppy theme. I love the bright red. Then we have December. Voila, that looks very nice. I'm actually gonna use one of these sticky notes to cover up um, the 2024. You can see how, because I started here, this is all super squished. I wanna start from the very top of the page. Yeah, I think I'll rip it. to use my bow flutter skin. The best part is, if you mess up, it's very hard to tell because it's supposed to look wonky. Down a cute little emoji. I'm gonna use the same colors for color coding. So blue is 10,000 steps. Brown then we have yellow. So I will actually be changing the workout code a little bit, um, just as my style of workout has changed. I don't think any of you care about that, but <laughs> I just wanted to make a note. Okay, and then I'm going to set up the bottom as well. I shouldn't have put my markers away. So I'm just going to write the word average. This is going to be my monthly average steps. And then I'm going to do a dot here for all of them. I have a lot of trouble with consistency, especially when it comes to like habit trackers and stuff. And I think the only reason why I was so consistent with um, January to June is because I prepped all of this in advance. If I had to set this up every single month, I absolutely would not have been so consistent. Plus, it's faster because I just do all of this in one go. Perfect. Okay, we are done with this. I will then quickly fill out some things that I remember off the top of my head. Okay, I filled this out the best that I could. I made a few mistakes, but we move on. The next thing that I'm going to do is set up my monthlies. Um, June, I'm going to skip because I already have it in the previous book. I'm going to start with July, and I have all of the monthly kits here. Again, this is to help remove any friction. Um, if I had to do this every single month, uh, I know myself, I will never really use the monthly section. So we are gonna set ourselves up for success now. Just gonna put down all of the base layers. I'm honestly very satisfied with this one page kit and I feel like this might sound a little bit, um, I don't know, arrogant, <laughs> but I can't imagine how I would want to change this for 2020, 2025. Like, in my mind currently, through using it for the past six months, I don't really have any notes on what I would personally like to change. Um, but if you have any feedback or suggestions through using this kit, maybe something didn't work for you, definitely let me know. And I'm definitely open feedback. I'm going to stick this washi strip at the bottom. I'm just going to do all of these in one go. 
I just came back from a meeting, which is also why I'm a little bit flustered. But yeah, the person that I was meeting with, they, they're they definitely not part of the planner community or like the stationary space, um, but they were using a planner. Um, they were using the Erin Condren planner. And it's pretty cool to see out in the open. My dream is to come across someone who is actually part of the stationary community by chance. Oh, I also wanted to thank everyone for all of your support with the washi pouch and stamp pre-order. By the time you're watching this, it would have already ended, but um, it was definitely a success. And I'm especially grateful because these pre-orders, they just allow me to turn my ideas that I'm unsure about into actual products and I wouldn't be able to do this um, otherwise so or rather I wouldn't have the guts to do it otherwise I'm a very risk averse person um, so these pre-orders just really help me out so thank you again we do many pre-orders for like washi tapes and pouches throughout the year but June is just when we do our largest one so it's a very exciting time I've been getting some questions about whether I will be doing an advent calendar this year for the holidays. Well, it's around the holidays, but um, I typically don't make it holiday themed at all. It's just like general themed. Um, and I think I am leaning towards a no this year. Again, I didn't do one last year. And I was going to do on this year, but I think it might be a bit too much for me to handle. Also, I don't have like a very clear idea nor inspiration for an advent, so we will see. If I suddenly have a very inspiring thought, then I can work on it. But as of now, I'm leaning towards a no. I think I have decent discipline. Um, especially when it comes to things like going to the gym, I, I will go rain or shine and with work as well. Like if I need to do something, I will do it even if it's not something that I'm particularly fond of. But when it comes to things that are more creative, I, I would rather not work on something that I'm not passionate about. Because I, I can personally see the difference in quality of work. So with something as big as an advent calendar, I, I definitely want a clear source of inspiration. We are almost done. I have to say... Just like very random, but I love this deep green color on Thursday. So then moving on to the title page, I realized my one other error. I forgot to bring home the decorative doodles. And again, I really need to get this filmed for Sunday. So we're just going to go without them. I do have the leftover um, washi headers here and I'm just gonna put this down here. Ideally, I would have all of these extra bits to decorate this a little bit more, but that is okay. Probably in my June planner update, I will show you the title pages all decorated. As you can see, I am all over the place today, mostly because I forgot about the meeting. It was very, very, very close to when I had to end the pre-order at noon. You would think that as a planner person, I would be a lot more organized and I wouldn't forget my meetings, but alas. And I have, I think, one more thing that I want to do. And that is the back cover. So I I was going to do 
just this, so it's like matching. But once again today, this time not on the Stairmaster, but on the treadmill, I had the idea just to cover it up with a bunch of vinyls and stuff. Um, I think it'll look nice. I also have some compliment cards, which if I do use it, I will just adhere it with some double-sided tape. So I'm going to do some placement and uh, I will chat with you later. So a little tip that I have is to um, take a photo of this placement and then that way I can have it on the side and I can see like where I'm supposed to put things. I like to tilt things a little bit so it's more interesting to look at. But I do keep a few things straight as well. By the way, I, I do see the specs and stuff. That's because the vinyls that I take home are the ones that are misfits and we can't really sell them. This one is obviously a bit too big, so I'm going to trim it down. Um, maybe just like half a centimeter. Cool. Then lastly, there are obviously some little gaps, so I'm actually just going to plop in a few emoji heads. I think that'll look pretty cute. Is this a little bit overboard? Probably. Last but not least, we are going to pop it into the cover. So that it can look nice and shiny. I always get nervous bending the cover. I'm just going to pop all of the extra bits in here. And then anything that I want to keep in here, I can do that as well. And here. Okay, I think we are done. I am, I think I'm actually most happy with the back cover. I'm so glad I decided to go with this instead of the vellum. So anyways, hopefully you got some inspiration from this setup. If not, I hope you enjoyed watching anyways. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this, through this I think, train wreck of a video. Um, but yeah, I hope you have a wonderful day and take care. Bye!